Today's topic, Mind, Character, and Personality, Chapter 3, Dangers in Psychology. Today we are going to look at Dangers in Psychology, Part 1. What we are going to cover is Satan, a student of the mind, Satan, master of subtle arts, he comes in disguise, Misuse of Sciences Pertaining to the Mind Let's begin. Satan is student of the mind. For thousands of years, Satan has been experimenting upon the properties of the human mind and he has learned to know it well. By his subtle workings in these last days, he is linking the human mind with his own, imbuing it with his thoughts, and he is doing this work in so deceptive a manner that those who accept his guidance know not that they are being led by him at his will. The great deceiver hopes so to confuse the minds of men and women that none but his voice will be heard. This is from letter 244, 1907. Well, if I bring that out there, people will not believe it, and I'm probably sure even when they when people hear that, they will not believe that because they think um, they don't think that Satan is such a powerful being. But of course, if you are being deceived, you wouldn't know it. And actually, anyone who's being deceived doesn't believe that he is being deceived or she's being deceived until the facts come. Nobody will say, I am being deceived. That's the catch. Part 2. Satan, Master of Subtle Arts Satan is continually seeking to influence human minds by his subtle arts. He is a mastermind given of God, but prostituted with all its noble capabilities to oppose and to make of no effect the counsel of the Most High. Signs of the Time, September 18, 1893 Well, people have asked that question throughout time. Did God create Satan? Well, the answer is very easy. The answer is no. God did not create Satan. The word Satan means adversary. God did not create any being to become his adversary. But of course, since God has given to all beings a free will, then Satan, or at that time Lucifer, he decided to become God's adversary because he wanted to be worshipped. And yes, whether he chose to be with God or with, against God, he still has the ability that God gave him. Just because he was banished from heaven doesn't mean that God withdrew all this ability that he had given him. That's the idea behind it. So if we think that because Satan is no longer a, a, a good angel, then we should think of him as he looks like a good angel on the outside, but pretty evil on the inside. And yes, he is very smart smarter than us. Let's move on to part 3. He comes in disguise. Satan's plans and devices are soliciting us on every hand. We should ever remember that he comes to us in disguise, covering his motives and the character of his temptations. He comes in garments of light, clad apparently in pure angel robes, that we may not discern that it is He. We need to use great caution to closely investigate His devices, lest we be deceived. Manuscript 34, 1897 I just mentioned that earlier. I don't think I need to talk about that part, actually. Part number 4 
misuse of sciences pertaining to the mind. In these days, when skepticism and infidelity so often appear in a scientific garb, we need to be guarded on every hand. Through this means, our great adversary is deceiving thousands and leading them captive according to his will. The advantage he takes of the sciences, sciences which pertain to the human mind, is tremendous. Here, serpent-like, he imperceptibly creeps in to corrupt the work of God. This entering in of Satan through the sciences is well devised. Through the channel of phrenology, psychology, and mesmerisms, he comes more directly to the people of this generation and works with that power which is to characterize his efforts near the close of probation. The minds of thousands have thus been poisoned and led into infidelity. While it is believed that one human mind so wonderfully affects another, Satan, who is ready to press every advantage, insinuates himself and works on the right hand and on the left. And while those who are devoted to the sciences allow them to the heavens because of the great and good works which they affirm are wrought by them, they little know what a power for evil they are cherishing, but it is a power which will yet work with all signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Mark the influence of these sciences, dear reader. For the conflict between Christ and Satan is not yet ended. Neglect of prayer leads men to rely on their own strength and opens the door to temptation. In many cases, the imagination is captivated by scientific research and men are flattered through the consciousness of their own powers. The sciences which treat of the human mind are very much exalted. They are good in their place, but they are seized upon by Satan as his powerful agents to deceive and destroy souls. His arts are accepted as from heaven, and he thus receives the worship which suits him well. The world, which is supposed to be benefited so much by phrenology and animal magnetism, never was so corrupt as now. Through these sciences, Virtue is destroyed and the foundations of spiritualism are laid. Signs of the Times, November 6, 1884 This is a lot to take because, you know, let me just put it that way. I have nothing here to add because even to myself, I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on sometimes. And most of scientists, they they like to lie about their result. They will not give the credit to God who deserves it, but they will give it to Satan. They will not say Satan primarily, but they will say evolution. And of course, they know that evolution did not create them. And so, this was Mind, Character, and Personality, Chapter 3, Part 1. Dangers in psychology. I will see you again another time. Until then, bye for now. Mario out. <laughs>